So this is from 1117. This is what I read last year on New Year's Day last year. Good morning. Good morning. So praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the last official service of 2017. Thanks for braving the cold. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're glad all of you are here. Um, so as I opened my notes this morning, I forgot that this was my new book for the new year, and I happened to turn to January 1st, 2017. So wouldn't it be fun <laughs> to go back and see what the Lord said January 1st, the last day of the year? A new season. Not just a new season, but a season of newness. And the scripture that I wrote down was Revelation 21.5. <laughs> and he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he, write, also he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. They are accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts, I will give water from the fountain of life. I will give from the fountain of the water of life without cost. Um, and I wrote that it's a new day and a new dawn, uh, a new creation and a new song. And together, this new creation ushers in the new heaven and the new earth. And I think that's exactly what our pastor has shared with us this year, that creation is groaning and that we when we come to newness of life in Jesus Christ we usher in heaven yeah. and bring heaven to earth Amen. so I encourage you to reminisce about the newness God has brought into your life and it struck me this morning that just because we're turning the page in the calendar the season isn't done we're still in a season of newness a, a season of him making things new right yeah. it means restoration it means reconciliation and um, the Lord put it in my spirit this morning to pray a blessing, a decree a blessing, right, Ron? Decree a blessing over 2017, and 2018 is a season of newness begins. So I'm just going to pray over everybody. Jesus, you have given us life and life abundantly. We thank you for the newness of life that you have brought into our lives in 2017. And as we let go of the things that have passed, we, as we let go of the things that have died, we ask that you resurrect and reconcile and restore all that has been died and raise it to newness of life. That all things are made new. That all things are restored. That all things are reconciled. And that a season of newness a season of newness yes. continues into 2018. Yes. Jesus, yes. it is finished. And by the words of our mouth, yes. and by the words that we say to ourselves and our minds, let us speak life. Yes. Let us speak life to ourselves. And let us open our mouths and speak life to this world around yes. us. We speak to the mountains, be thou removed and cast into the sea. We speak to death and say, go back to the pit of hell from whence you came. Yes. and raise up in newness of life yes, God. abundant life yes, God. you are the God of more than enough and right now pour it out Lord pour out more than enough Jesus. in all things yes, Lord. more than enough yes. Yes, Lord. thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord in Jesus name in Jesus name yes Lord he is so good. He is so good. Yes. <laughs> Tammy literally just said he makes all things new. Not even three minutes ago we were talking about something not even related. Yes. And he does. Yes. You know, it's, it's, things happen in this life that we don't always understand. But he makes all things new. Yes. No matter what the world around us right. looks like, no matter what the mountains are, speak to it. Yes. Speak to our own minds, that yes. inner voice. That's what he's really been talking to me about, our self-talk. Yes. Because what we talk to ourselves is what's going to come out of our mouth. Yes, that's exactly right. In Jesus' name, yes. yeah. You know, we're, since we renew our minds daily, so I think he, and he does, I mean, I don't think, I know he does, remind us daily of things. Yeah. 
because what you just said about new creation and all that, that's what we are. We're new creatures. We're not a fixed up one, a little bit better than I used to be. I'm not as bad as I used to be, you know, I once was or whatever. We are new, a new creation. And he makes all things new. And then all this week, I've been singing this old, old song. That sing unto the Lord a new song. Yeah. <laughs> and he wants us to approach each day as a new day, a new creation, revealing his kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So awesome. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And what he's been downloading to me, and I've, I told Toby last night, everything I've been reading is ask for the big things. Mm. We are not mediocre people. No. We are not put on this earth to just settle. We are to be above yes. abundantly, yes. like you said in that yes. prayer at the end, and that's what triggered it. It was, he took me back last night, and I was reading just Genesis for about four hours, and the things that he provided for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those things yes. are ours. I mean, that's he right. never left them empty. Yeah. No. Um, big things, like if you need a help, healing in your body, believe him for the big thing, for the good report. Mm -hmm. um, if you need a financial, like we've always talked about, believe him for the big, I mean, think big. Think yeah. outside of what your human mind can even believe for Amen. and trust him. Yeah. And make him, put him at his word. Yeah. Because yes. he said that. He said to command yes. him. And so when we make him and put him at his word and trust him, our hearts are settled. He will provide for us. Amen. 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 Yeah, when Abraham went somewhere, yeah. when Abraham went somewhere, he changed the economy of the cities he traveled in. That's the impact that we're to have. And when you were talking about newness, I couldn't help but think that we just opened presents, right? And they're new things. His newness is a present. Every day is a present. It's a gift. And it's an adventure. It's what makes this life full of joy right. and yes. adventure. I mean, yes. you just don't know. Right. Who knows what the Lord's going to do? Yeah. Right. Who knows? And that's the adventure and that's the exactly. Yeah, I mean, it just makes it all so and wonderful. It's not just our and our no, yeah. It's Absolutely. It's, exactly. it's everything. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else this morning you think you want to share? Yeah. Yes, I want to uh, thank the Lord for how you know, sometimes in life we have a situation happen. But, but God was there at that time, and then He fulfills it later on. Like, like my dad passed away um, when I was young, and I always felt that I wish He was around when I was later, because he, he only got to see one of my grandchildren and I passed. And I always missed just that that time to get older and get adults and you talk. Well, I moved up here in 2007 and ended up working uh, at a place, and there were two older guys there. And the one guy kind of took me in like I was his son. And I had a chance to go out and we went out with a friend to have supper with him. And, and I was just so thankful to him because it was like God restored that. Yeah. You know, and he <coughs> had that person there in my life to kind of fill that and, and make it happen. And, and I just was so thankful for him because he taught me how important it is to be a family man, how important it is to love. You know, love that lady that God brings in your life. And they've been married for 50 years. You know, and I, I just remember one time we, we had to go get some trucks on a Friday night. And we could go get a Friday or Saturday. And I think, hey, what? I, I run as hard as I want to Saturday. But Friday night is me and Mama's night. And we never miss that for nothing. You know, and I just, that just touched my heart. And then uh, I just thought that God is fulfilling that. You didn't forget about what I wanted at that time. Yeah. Right. But years later, you brought it at the right time. So I just thank the Lord for that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else anything? Prayer requests, testimonies this morning? All right, let's stand and go to the Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank love you, Lord. you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing as you continue to pour out your wisdom and revelation. Thank you that you are faithful, Lord. Faithful. We'll put our hope and our trust in you. You're never disappointed. 
let us take hold of the thoughts that come to our mind, the voice in our head, Lord. Let your voice be the voice that guides us. The Holy Spirit be the voice that whispers, Lord. Let us hear the still, small voice, Lord, as you speak to us and encourage us and love us. Lord, and let us speak words of life, words of love, words of freedom and liberty, Lord. Let our eyes be open and our ears open to hear and to see when those around need life, when those around us need hope, when those around us need to know the love of Jesus Christ that transforms and changes everything. Thank you, Lord, for those faithful who have gathered here today, Lord, who are hungering and thirsting for things of your kingdom, Lord, who will not be set aside, who come together and worship, Lord, to lift you up and exalt you, who come together to feast on your word. Lord, we celebrate your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done and the blessings and the things that you have made new in 2017. Thank you that this season of newness continues into 2018. Jesus, have your way, Lord, as you teach us how to bring heaven to earth, as you teach us how to speak to the mountains and see them removed. Give your people wisdom and revelation. Give your people vision and focus. Vision and focus for the path ahead. As we move forward, following after you in this great adventure, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every member of this body, Lord. Draw those in who need to hear the word. Draw those in who need to feel your presence. Draw those in who are missing in this body, from the north and the south and the east and the west. Jesus, as we look ahead, Lord. Lead the way, Lord. Lead the way, for we know you will always lead us and guide us into victory, Lord. That you are the God of more than enough. More than enough. We thank you for this abundant life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just a reminder, if you brought a cell phone, to turn it off or silence it this morning. All right, this is the point where I need a show of hands. Anybody going to come tonight? Um, we're happy to have our party. It's going to be really cold out, but I want to just not cancel it unless we're going to have people that aren't going to be able to make it. Anybody? I know you're coming. You don't have choice, Michael. <laughs> Peter, you're coming? Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Okay, that's all right. John, you, you and Sheila going to come maybe? Okay. Well, all right. It's going to be a different kind of game night then, huh? <laughs> it's going to be. You coming? Are you coming, Jayla? Are you coming to the party? Two babies. Two babies. <laughs> all right. What time is starting? Seven. Wait, can you just text me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So game on, seven o'clock. Game on. Anybody change a heart and change a mind? Uh, seven o'clock, we will be here. Uh, there will be hot chocolate, homemade hot chocolate. I can have my Sunday school kids attest it's pretty darn delicious. Um, and we'll bring some snacks and some games. I'm bringing my Mexican train dominoes. I want a rematch. Put that one back there in the back. He beat me on Christmas. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Eastern Gate House of Prayer. Pressing in, pressing on. Uh, the things that have changed through the atmosphere this year will continue through next year. Uh, not only have doors open and walls have been knocked down, but now we're going to go to the doctor and try and reclaim those things yes. that belong to the kingdom. Amen. 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 Winter jam. Yep. Young and old, uh, praying for the youth to be able to go, and the older youth to be able to go, and the younger youth to be able to go. <laughs> so, whatever it takes. Um, we're planning on it. We'll probably meet here at a certain time. We'll get closer to that date. We'll come up with more details. Yeah. All right. Tickets are fifteen dollars, and if you don't have fifteen dollars, see Mike or myself, yep. and we'll make sure everybody that wants to go can go. Yeah. All right. Um, Toby, you want to come take an offering this morning? Lord, we 
thankful to be here, God. Close the book on another year that's been with us, God. A year of revelation and knowledge, Lord. God, we have heard and taken in so much, God. But now as we press into a new year, Lord, it begins to manifest. We begin to proclaim the truth of your word as we've heard it, Lord God. We watch it become flesh and build, Lord God. As it was in the days of old, you said, yes. your word never fails, Lord God. It's the same right. yesterday, yes. today, and forever. Yes. And we stand and believe it each and every day, the truth of your word, Lord God. And as we enter a new year, Lord God, we'll see the manifestation of your truth, Lord. Yes. Praise God. Now, God, we just ask that you bless this service, God. Bless this offering. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The worship team comes forth.
familiar with the lyrics of that song. We are all called to be kings and priests. We are all called to reign. Yes. And now is the time. Yes. Now is the time. Yes. The kingdom that is within you, that rivers of living water, those things that are swelling and rolling up within you, those, those rivers are to be poured out now. Yes. Those times are now. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 That raging river that is within us. Those streams of living water. The Lord wants to release now. The floodgates are open. The cold, the freezing cannot hold. It will not freeze open that raging river. As was described many months ago, the river of God is, is like oil. Oil catches fire, okay?
Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. Hallelujah. Thank you for being you, perfect in every way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's praise him for his goodness right now. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne, for that blessing. Hallelujah. I hope you all receive it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody, for their testimonies. And hallelujah. Appreciate that, Mike. Thank you and the worship team, as always. And praise the Lord. Good to see Darlene. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I got a knock at the door at 9.30 and I was sound asleep. <laughs> My ride was here. Praise the Lord. And here I am. Yay. Thank the Lord. Amen. Reminds me of an old Merle Ewing song. Your ride is on the way. Praise God. Yes. Thank the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Getting ready for a great new year. Amen. God's got great things in store. Amen. It's just a question of us believing and, and receiving. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank all of you for uh, braving the temperatures and the somewhat messed up roads, depending on where you're at, but uh, coming out and worshiping the Lord this last day of the year. Amen. And starting off the new year with all kinds of confidence in God and great expectations in what God has in store for all of us. Praise the Lord. If I got to turn this thing on, praise the Lord. Am I on now? Okay, praise the Lord. I couldn't remember if I turned it on or not. Short-term memory loss, it comes from other things besides just age. That was a long time ago, praise the Lord. I won't get into all that. But. Amen. I was just thinking about creative things. You know, we are creative beings. Because we're created in the image of God, the Creator, you know. And so when I think about that, I, I thought about, I'm thinking that the guy who named the fireplace was probably not a Christian because he wasn't very creative. Think of it. Fireplace. Yeah, but, you know, does anybody else, doesn't that bother you? It's just a fireplace? You look, you go, yeah, okay. Uh, so sometimes, you know, I guess it's okay, but I, I'm thinking this, well, that's why they make... That's why they have the like a thesaurus, right? And I'll give up my thesaurus when you pry it from my frigid, frosty, frozen, lifeless, stiff extremities. Praise the Lord. It's called English, you know, we just don't use it a whole lot, praise the Lord. We just kind of slang everything out here and just do what we do, praise the Lord. Thank you, James. James and I are on the same page. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Praise God. And I don't know if that's, uh, you know, a, a blessing for me or a curse for James, but <laughs> it's what it is. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, I'm going to be relatively brief this, this morning and uh, cause it, because it is uh, what it is, the temperatures and so on and so forth. And, and I want to apologize, too, before we go any further for the condition of the parking uh, we have, we've had all kinds of problems. The, the, the guy that was pushing snow for us last year passed away over the summer. And, uh, and the people that were doing it the year before that, they got out of the business altogether. And so we've had a little trouble trying to find somebody. But we've got that all taken care of as of yesterday. And so from now on, if we get an inch or more snow, it'll be dealt with. So, but in the meantime, I apologize for having to wade through whatever that is out there, two, three, four inches, whatever. But uh, I know it's not a comfortable thing to have to do, but it's taken care of now, so moving forward, we'll be good. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, they did. James and, and Mike cleared the sidewalks off for us, so we're good. Praise the Lord. I'm going to let that go because I can't. I have to write it down. i got to take notes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, praise God. Let's, uh, we're going to take communion at the end, and so I'm going to kind of transition from uh, the basic message. It's not, it's not a change, but it's just kind of moving into what, uh, what we're going to do in terms of, of, uh, of uh, communion and, uh, and the Lord's Supper. Praise the Lord. So uh, beginning the service, uh, uh, let's start with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And He's doing great things. Hallelujah. In this world and in all of us. Praise the Lord. If we just, just become aware of it. Amen. So, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Just leave that up there for a second. Cindy, it's great to see you. Praise the Lord. It's been a while. I'm really pleased that you're able to be here today. 
Amen. Just believing for a complete and total recovery that God's just going to restore all that the enemy has tried to uh, damage and take from you. Amen. And, and we just look forward to seeing more and more of you as the new year, amen, continues on. Praise the Lord. God bless Cindy. She's a, a great gal. Hallelujah. So, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, and preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Now, in this scripture, God begins to reveal one of, the, one of his great mysteries, amen, which is he would be revealed in flesh, amen. Now, this isn't just, we've always looked at this as a Godhead kind of thing, you know, like God reveals himself in the person of Jesus. But this isn't just referring to the Godhead. It is speaking of the Godhead, but not only speaking of the Godhead. He's talking about what his, this mystery is that God really wants to involve himself in, and that's revealing himself in humans, in flesh. Praise the Lord. Look at John uh, 1.14. And this is talking about, you know, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Then the Word becomes flesh, right? So without controversy, or, uh, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. So Jesus Christ Himself came as the pattern Son, the first begotten, amen, the first Son, the prototype, amen. And so He came to show us the heart of God for His creation. Praise the Lord. He came to bring this new species, as Tammy was talking about and others this morning, this new creation into being. He was the first begotten, the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. He was the first of a whole new species of man, a whole new creation. And when we speak of sons, amen, we're not gender specific here. He's just talking about offspring. Praise the Lord. So look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. Galatians 1, 13 through 17. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. So Paul is laying out here the purpose of God for everybody, for all of us, amen, not just for Paul, amen, but everybody that's born again of the Spirit of God, and that purpose that he's laying out here is to reveal his Son in us. Yes. Praise the Lord. We've made it about Jesus, or we've made it about Paul, or a few isolated people. But this mystery that God wants to reveal is God in you, yes. the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He wants to you, every one of us, to be a revealing, amen, of Jesus Christ. So we're not just to pursue religion. This is, what, this is what's happened for 2,000 years to, to the greater degree, that we just pursued religion or religious traditions or a gospel that's after man. Amen. And Paul said he profited in the Jews' religion more than most. He was zealous of the traditions of his fathers. Amen. But all that pursuit of religion wasn't enough. Paul was changed from a religious zealot to desiring to be a revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. That's what changed his life, and that's what changed the lives of the people that he came into contact with. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10. Praise the Lord. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Now that's what we were talking about. Everybody goes through stuff. This is what he's talking about here. Amen. Always bearing about the body in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that li the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So we struggle. We, we, we are 
under persecution and, and all, but we don't despair, we don't give up. Always caring about the crucifixion or the death of Christ in our body, amen. But we do that, that so that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So just as we are persecuted, just as we are, uh, you know, struggling with issues and so forth, he said, in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So even though we're going through this stuff, the, the dying or the dying of the Lord, amen, in our body, we're also experiencing, amen, the life being made manifest in this same body. Praise the Lord. That's why we don't despair. That's why we don't give up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God's intent or God's purpose is to be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why he had to deal with sin. Sin was not a big deal. It just separated us from God. I mean, it was a big deal in that sense, but it's not a big deal in the mind of God. It was just a barrier between God being able to manifest himself in us because of sin. God and sin can't exist in the same place. So he had to deal with our sin so that he could come, amen, and dwell in these earthen vessels so that this mystery could be revealed. Amen. Second Corinthians, let's just back up to uh, uh, here in chapter 4 to verses 1 and 2. Praise God. Amen. So he says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, this is still Paul talking about, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Amen. We've got, we, we have grace. We have mercy. So we don't give up. We don't faint. Amen. We faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Now, if we, you know what we just read where he talks about, he, he's, he's kind of... Uh, going here, he's, he's setting up the stage for what he was going to say what, that we just read about traditions, about zealot, uh, you know, pursuing the traditions of his father. In the religious thing, I was really right out there, but it just didn't produ produce anything. And so he goes, here he's talking about that mentality, amen, of renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty, the, the deceptiveness of religion that has made God to be evil and angry and, the, and the, the one who produces all the bad things in the world. And, and you're sick because God's trying to teach you a lesson and all this other crazy stuff. Amen. That's what he's talking about here. Dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. I am the Word of God. Praise the Lord. So we just are representing, it's just another way of saying we are revealing Christ, amen, to this world. Amen. Not by being, you know, sterile and, and perfect and, and, you know, unflawed. But it's from our spirit, amen, that we produce Christ. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's this God being delivered or revealed in a human being. In our flawed condition, in our yes. imperfectness, amen, God's perfection can be pre pre presented, amen, to a world. So it gives hope to people with problems. It gives hope to people with issues because they look at us and say, well, you know, they're not perfect. No, but Christ in me is perfect. He has made me perfect in the eyes of God. Even though this flesh may fail, I am perfect and righteous in Christ, amen, because of his finished work. Hallelujah. Amen. So this ministry is more than preaching. That's not what Paul's talking about here. It's about being a dispenser or a communicator of a new covenant. Of the grace of God that has come, amen, to reveal his goodness and his love, amen, to mortal beings. God's goodness, his grace has come. And even though we're flawed, his grace, amen, declares us righteous, hallelujah, in a fallen world. Believe me, that's a message the world needs because they know they got issues. They know they got problems and they can't fix them. Hallelujah. This is about communicating this new covenant. And so God deposited a treasure in us. And that treasure is Him. His life. Praise the Lord. So God wants to reveal Himself. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. We've read this over and over and over. Without a vision, the people perish. We think that's like we got a prophetic kind of idea of the future or we're projecting some future event or... Uh, we're, we have a vision for great church growth or we have a vision for, uh, you know, financial blessing or whatever it might be. But that's really not the issue here. 
Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. Now, the word vision comes from a Hebrew word. The word that you use right here comes from a Hebrew word. And you can look it up uh, in a concordance. Strong's, for example, gives that uh, Hebrew word, the number 2380, that is vision, that literal, the way it was written in initially, originally, it was written in Hebrew. And that Hebrew word that was used was katsuth. And that word means, or is the equivalent to the Greek word apocalypsis, which is translated in the book of Revelation as appearing. Did I make sense out of all that? Yeah. So the word that's actually used there, where we say vision, in the Greek it's apocalypsis, in Hebrew it's katsuth, but the word means appearing. Where, where there is no appearing, the people perish. Praise God. Amen. So, the Lord isn't just using vision as a goal or a plan or some future thing that we're talking about for me. I have a vision that this is what's going to happen. I have this, this expectation. No. The purpose of God is that there be an appearing. Because if there is no appearing, where there is no manifestation of the Lord Jesus, the people perish. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Where we, we can talk about religion all we want. We can produce more works and more, more laws and more rules. But if there's no appearing, if there's no revelation of Jesus, then people perish yes. as a result of it. Yes. And God has made us the revealers. Yes. God has made us, amen, the, the birthers of Christ yes. all the time, every day. Yes. Praise the Lord. Every day, God wants to be revealed. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. That word saved is sozo, and we've talked about it many times. It means we will be healed, we will be prospered, we will be delivered, we will be protected, we will be provided for. All of those things are in that. So, by His death, we were reconciled, much more than being reconciled now that his death has put us in right standing with God and made us the righteousness of God and made us sons and daughters amen then we're going to be blessed in every area of our life then we're going to experience the abundant life that he speaks of in the scripture hallelujah when we know when we have a vision when we when we begin to realize there's an appearing every day every minute every every moment of our life there can be an appearing of jesus in the service this morning when suzanne was given the blessing if you can receive that there's an appearing of jesus takes place whenever you get prayer for a healing or you're believing god for a healing there is an appearing taking place there is a manifestation amen of jesus taking place in your life right and that is what we export yes it's not just for us, but it's like he said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. I'm going to give you my life so that you can be a dispenser of my life, so that you can release my life. He is the river flows out, amen, of the, uh, of the throne of God. And we, are, we talk about we're, the river. we're not the river, but the river, ta it talks about everywhere that there are these tributaries, these branches, amen, to the river. That's us. The river flows out of God, and it flows through us. We are tributaries. We are, amen, pr producers, amen, of that river into other people's lives. Amen. Out of your belly will flow, amen, rivers of living water. If we're abiding in Him, in the vine, yes. then the branches produce. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. 1 John 3, excuse me, verses 1 through 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Why don't the world know us? Because it knew him not. Why, what didn't they know about him? They knew he was Jesus. They knew that he was Mary's son. They didn't know that he was a dispenser of God. They didn't know that he was a carrier of God's life. That's what they don't know about you. It isn't that they don't know us. 
They just don't know us for who we truly are. Just like with Jesus. They knew the man Jesus, but they didn't know the God man. They didn't know the God that was in him. In fact, they accused him of blasphemy when he declared that to be the truth. He said, now that you have the same thing, and people won't know you for the same reason. Because all they can see is the flesh. All they can say is, he's a bastard son of Mary. I know his family. He grew up in that little town. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Praise the Lord. That's us. The world doesn't know that we are God carriers. Hallelujah. Because it knew Him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And every man that hath this hope in himself in Him purifieth himself even as He is pure. Now, he's not talking about you know, getting your stuff all together because that's already done. He's talking about keeping one mind, having the purity of thought. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You've got to do like Jesus and only say what God said. Oh, I only say what my Father says. I know I'm feeling something or somebody said this or I had this, you know, failure. But that's not me. I am keeping the purity of thought that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a carrier, a revealer of Jesus Christ, of God himself in my flesh. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the, look, he says, we are the sons of God. Now, that word sons is a Greek word. It's technon, and it means children. So, in other words, he's saying we are the children of God, or we are immature yet. Praise the Lord. Remember, Paul said, I, I'm striving for the, to reach, the, I haven't reached that place, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Which is that, what is that high calling of God? It's to reveal God. And Paul said, I haven't totally gotten there yet, but I'm pushing, I'm, I'm moving towards that mark. That's, that's my aim, that's my goal, that's my vision, hallelujah, amen, is to be a revealer of Jesus, praise the Lord. So he says, now, we are children of God and immature. Now, here's the problem. The church will always be immature if there isn't a revelation of the grace of God. Yes, right. Because we'll always be trying to be better yes. that we can't be better. Right. If we understand that we already are perfect, then there's no more striving for that. We can just start being what we are, hallelujah, instead of trying to become something. Yes. Praise the Lord. So he says, we, as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus, he appears. Why? Because we are exactly like him. Full of grace and truth. Don't have to be angry. Don't have to be bitter. Don't have to be judgmental. Don't have to be... Jesus, the sinners were drawn to Him. Why? Because He wasn't judging. He wasn't critiquing. He wasn't criticizing. He was just saying, come unto me, all you that live. I'll give you rest. That's what we're supposed to be. Dispensers of the rest of God. Now, if we're not in rest, we can't dispense rest. If we're all agitated and freaked out and trying to be and, and struggling with what we're not and so on and so forth, we are like Paul in, in, in Romans 7. The harder I try, the better to be, the worse I am. I just keep going around this vicious circle of, of failure and a little success and then more failure. We are successful. We are more than conquerors. We have already overcome it all. And here we are still fighting battles, amen. It's like they said, well, I'll, I'll fight till hell freezes over and then I'll fight him on the ice. I'm not fighting him anymore. He's defeated. I'm just speaking, amen, the victory into his, uh, you know, anytime he shows his face, I'm just declaring the victory. I don't have to fight him. He'll flee from me if I declare the word of God in agreement with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. And we become a revelation. Praise the Lord. Now, here's what we've failed to understand, I think, in the past. And that is that God's not going to manifest. He's not going to manifest us. That's what we've been all about. If I get perfect enough, God will show my perfection and he'll manifest me as righteous and good and holy and all that. It's not the way it works. We're not going to manifest. He's not going to manifest us. We are going to manifest Him. Yes. He's going to be revealed through us. Yes. We have this treasure, this God life in an earthen vessel. Yes. I said last week, I was talking about He rides the chariots. Yes. And that, that same word, we've, we read it before, was people, humans in the clouds. We are the clouds. We're not, it's not people in the clouds. The clouds are people. 
this great cloud of witnesses, amen, and we're caught up in the clouds. He comes in the clouds. He comes in people. And we're waiting on some atmospheric condition to take place, and He's coming in people. Hallelujah. I'm not saying there isn't a future coming. I'm just saying He's coming all the time, but He's coming in people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Now, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Not yours, not what you can produce, not what you can do. Just seek the gift, seek the grace of God. Yes. Amen. And all the things, yes. everything pertains to life and godliness, yes. Yes. will be added unto you. Yes. Praise God. Without a revealing of His righteousness in us, there's no revealing of Him. Praise God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's the only way He can be revealed is we get that settled first. Until we settle that, there's no revelation of Him. There's just information about Him. And that information can be interpreted any way we want to. And that's why we've got 50,000 different religions and, and all the different denominations and everything else we've got. Because it's a, it's a religion after man. It's a gospel after man instead of a go the gospel of God. Instead of the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he preached. The gospel of grace. Yes. And everywhere he preached it, there was a revelation of God. Healings. Deliverance. Yes. Breakthroughs. All of that happened all the time because that's not because, you know, not because of uh, some great, you know, God uh, action. He was not operating as God in this earth. He was operating as a man submitted to God. Yes. Yes. That the power would be of God and not of man. If we ever get that, we'll see the signs and wonders. We'll see that we were created, the scripture says in Isaiah, for signs and wonders. Yes. Me and the children you've given me says we're created for signs and wonders. As long as this is a traditional kind of way of approaching it, as long as it's a religious thing, those things are hit or miss at best. They become consistent when we become single-minded and consistent in the reality of who we are in Christ, of our true identity as children of God. Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Romans 5, 15 through 21. And I mean, it's, I, I said here, I think, I don't know if it's last week, Wednesday, whenever it was, but we've got to quit making this about going to church. We need to come to church. We need to come together. But we need to quit making it about going to church and we need to start making it about being the church. Yes. Take it everywhere we go so it isn't just something we do twice a week. Wow. Amen. But every day, every moment yes. is a birthing of Jesus. Every, every day is a revealing or an appearing yes. of Christ in every situation and circumstance that we confront, whether it's somebody else or our own life. Amen. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be made dead, or many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. So just to kind of rephrase it a little bit, he's saying, Adam did it. And y'all are recipients of the thing he did. Right? You didn't have to do anything. You didn't do anything to be a sinner except get born. Now, I'm not saying you didn't do sinful things after you got born, but that's not the problem. The problem is you were born in sin. You were conceived in sin. Because your mama and your daddy were conceived in sin. Because everybody come out of Adam. It's this simple. Because of that. He said, here's the deal. Everybody becomes a sinner because of the one sin. Now, if you get born again... You become the righteousness of God. You didn't do anything except get born again. Now your heavenly father is your, is your father, is your antecedent. Now you, he is the, the progenitor of your life, praise the Lord. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Now why is it we can accept the fact that we're all sinners because of Adam and we can't accept the fact that we're all the righteousness of God because of him? 
Amen. It's a fact. Everybody outside of Christ is lost and on their way to hell. But not because God wants them to go there, because God came so that everybody could be delivered from that, uh, from that uh, condemnation. So that everybody could be a child of God. So that everybody could be a revealer of Christ. Just as in the flesh, we are revealers of Adam, the earth man. In Christ, we are the revealer of the heavenly man, the God man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For if by one man's okay. So therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men, all men, unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Praise the Lord. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So the law come in to show everybody, y'all are sinners. Whether you know it or not, whether you accept it or not, it's the fact. The law is telling you what you should do, but you can't do. And the law won't do anything to help you do it. It'll just continue to expose your inability to do it. Amen. So that Jesus comes, amen, so that the law then is, it, it produces even a greater understanding of sin. Amen. And then grace comes to show you, amen, a way out of the demands of the law. Jesus fully fulfilled the demands of the law so that there is no demand on us. In fact, there is no law. Now, let me tell you something. That'll send you crazy or it'll turn you into, amen, a revealer of Jesus. Now, you might have to take a little of that path to get there. Hallelujah. How many of you know, if you, uh, you know, if, if you were never allowed to do anything at home, if you lived in a very strict, rigid kind of environment where you, you don't go anywhere, you know, everything's a sin, everything's bad, you know, you can't go play pool, you can't go to a movie, you, you know, you can't uh, have a glass of wine, you can't do anything. And then you turn 18. And you're no longer under that control. There's a good chance you'll probably do some stupid stuff just because you felt deprived for all this time. But if you have a lick of sense, at some point you'll realize all that stuff's not good. Maybe all of it isn't necessarily sin. So there are some things that I can enjoy. Still cool with God. But some stuff is just damaging. It's just destructive. Amen. So you get wise, you, you, you yeah. grow a little and you realize, okay, that, not so much of that, maybe a little of this and that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. That's what grace does. Yes. It may make you a little crazy at first because you get free from all of that yes. junk. Yes. Amen? Yeah. But God's not nervous about it because there is no law. Right. There's not a law. No. There's no law. So it's like there's no speed limit. Right. And we've all heard the analogy over and over. That means you can, that's like the Autobahn everywhere. You can drive 150 if your car will go that fast. It may not be the safest thing to do all the time. But there's no law against it, so you can't be punished for it. That's what Jesus did. That's hard to get your head around when we've all been raised in church in a, in a religious environment that says, don't, don't. And if you don't, then he will. And if you do, he won't. It's all bogus. He did it all. So there is no law. There is no law. That doesn't mean there aren't some things that you ought to use some common sense about and, and, and you know, use it in your life. It just means if you don't, the consequences are not hell. The consequences are not judgment. It just may mean you'll get to heaven sooner than you really should. Praise the Lord. You know what I mean? So that's the, that's the deal. This is, this is un, unimaginable from a religious perspective. There's got to be something I have to do. No. All you got to do is believe. That's all you got to do. Just like all you had to do to be that sinner was to get born. All you got to do to become righteous is to get born again. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a different dynamic. We're in a different realm. We're, we are spirit beings now. We're not dealing with the, the natural world. Only in the way that we can influence it for God. 
We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We are spirit beings. We are in another realm, and we got to get our head attuned to that reality, to who we are in Christ. Otherwise, we suffer the consequences of the flesh, even though that's not our true identity. Right. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, to carry that on a little bit further, we'll get kind of moving into the... Uh, the communion aspect of this, but let's let's go to John chapter six, and verses fifty three through fifty six. John six fifty three through fifty six. You know, when when I was first uh, saved, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we'd have communion. <clears throat> there was always that admonition: don't take this unworthily. I mean, it's like you could just be like the the guy in uh, the uh, what was that the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and they go in to get the the cup, you know, of the Lord, and the, and the old uh, guard there, the, the ancient warrior, you know, of the. English uh, knights and so forth. He says, uh, "Choose wisely," because they were trying to figure out which one it was. And of course, the guy he grabs the one that's all covered with jewels and fancy and everything else, and drinks it, think he's going to have eternal life. Because, and of course, his body he just starts withering. I mean, the flesh falls off. The but you know everything. I mean, he just dies right there before your eyes. You see like a hundred years of deterioration in a in a body right there in a matter of seconds. And the old knight says, he chose poorly. I thought like that was the greatest understatement I've ever heard in my life. He, yeah, he did. That was not a good choice. And I'm saying that that's kind of the way we, we think of, you know, drink of this cup unworthily. And what's going to happen? I'm going to be like that guy. I'm going to wither up and die right here or something horrible. Bugs are going to start crawling out my nose and my ears. And I'm like this 100-year dead person. Or some horrible thing will happen. I'll get hit by a truck. Something bad will happen to me because of that. That is so untrue. And I want to talk about that. So then Jesus said, And then verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh... And drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. All right? Now, obviously this is symbolic. We're not Catholics, and I, this is not a dig on the Catholics, but they believe in sub, trans, transubstantiation. I, I, I know I'm saying that word wrong. Transubstantiation is the word I'm trying to get out. Which means that literally when you take communion or you take the mass, you are, your body is transformed. Or that wafer becomes Jesus, right? And the, the wine becomes his blood. We don't believe that. This is symbolic. Jesus said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. He's, he's saying, I want you to think again about this. Think about what's happened. And that's what this is. It's a reminder of what Jesus has done. Amen. So we've already received the life of God. We're born again. We wouldn't be taking communion if we weren't believers. Right? I mean, what would be the point? So look at First Corinthians, or yes, First Corinthians now, eleven, uh, verses twenty-seven through twenty-nine. First Corinthians eleven twenty-seven through twenty-nine. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now let's look at this in the big picture. In the, in the, the reality of this is that if when we receive Christ, I'm talking about being born again, believing on Him. That's what this symbolizes, right? That's what communion is symbolizing. He says if we, if we don't do it, in faith, if we don't believe it, then we're still stuck in our mess. We're still damned. That's all he's talking about. If, if you don't respond to Christ and to the free gift of His grace, you're still in your sin. 
He's not talking about some other judgment's going to come on you after you take communion. He's talking about you have to believe in Jesus. You have to receive Him. Now that doesn't mean you've got to have a total perfect understanding of everything about the you know, death, burial, and resurrection and the physics of it and all that kind of stuff. No, you just got to have faith. You just got to believe. You've got to have confidence in what God said. That's what faith is. Okay? All right, so let's go back now. So this is not talking about fear or you're being disqualified somehow when you take communion. All right, John chapter 6. Again, let's go back there to 53 through 56. And I'll just show you the contradictions that come up in religion because we, don't, we just won't take it for what it is. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. So based on that scripture, you need to understand your worthiness is not based on your performance. It's based on Jesus' redemptive work. That's what he's showing us. In other words, I'm not worthy because of what I've done. I'm worthy because of what he's done. I'm just getting the benefit. This is the good news. Okay? So when I discern the Lord's body, I discover that His shed blood and His broken body is what qualifies me to receive this eternal life, this God life. Yes. That's what communion is about. Yes. Amen? I'm discerning the Lord's body. Broken for me. By His stripes, I was healed. That's what we're doing. That's what it's about. Amen? So His shed blood, His broken body is what qualifies me to receive the eternal life of God. Amen. God life. Yes. It's what made me fit for Him to dwell in in the first place. Exactly. And for me to dwell in Him. Right. Praise the Lord. So, just all right, for example, Peter. He really thought that he could lay down his life for Jesus. He was a zealot, only on the Christian side, right? But Jesus knew that without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, of God life in him, Peter's best efforts were going to end up in failure. Which is exactly what happened, right? Because Christ hadn't been crucified, hadn't been raised, you know, so the Holy Spirit wasn't poured out, there wasn't the advantage, you didn't have the opportunity to receive God life yet. So, in other words, I have to be worthy to take communion based on the misinterpretation of that scripture. I have to be worthy to take communion Except that partaking of the communion is what makes me worthy. It's called an oxymoron. It's like a doctor saying, if, uh, if you're sick, you're disqualified from taking this medication. Except that this medication is what will rid you of the sickness. We've had it backwards. We've, we've made demands before we give supply. We're doing what the law did. We're demanding something of people who have no means to satisfy the demand. They can't do it. Even to ourselves. If we're already perfect, before we take the body and the blood of Jesus, then why do we take it? And I'm talking about being born again. I'm not talking about communion. Right? We take it because we want to be born again. We take this in remembrance of that act. Yes. So that healing can come. So that deliverance can come. So that abundance can come into your life. It renews your mind to the truth of what God has done. Yes. It's not about you. It's about Him. And we're just reminding ourselves, thank you, Jesus, for your life. Thank you for God life. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you. It's like telling people they have to be perfect and sinless before they can receive the Holy Ghost. People, I know people, literally, that went a year, maybe two years, trying to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they couldn't get 
rid of everything in their life that they thought was stopping the Holy Ghost from coming. That is so untrue. It's so unbiblical. Now, we, we should change our mind. We should repent. But you don't have to tarry for years waiting to receive something that's a free gift. You just got to believe that God wants you to have it. That you're worthy to have it. See, we think of that as blasphemy, but that's what the Bible tells us. He has made us worthy. So, you know, because Judas didn't discern the Lord's body, he went out and hung himself. Now, that's a fact. If he'd have waited just a couple of hours, the hanging of Jesus would have been his hanging. Yes. Amen. We are crucified with Christ. It would have taken care of it. But he went out and hung himself first because of his guilt, because of his not discerning the Lord's body. There's a religious spirit in the church that tells you to go hang yourself because you can't get it all together. And people leave the grace of God and the goodness of God to try to reproduce some behavior or something, amen, that will make them acceptable again to God. When God has already said, I have already made you acceptable. There's nothing more you can do except to receive it. Praise the Lord. Jesus' death was our death. His blood and His body were broken and given to forgive and cover all of my betrayals, all of my failures. Praise the Lord. Now that I'm forgiven, I am qualified. I'm accepted in the beloved. I can partake of His resurrection life, His indwelling presence to empower me to be righteous, to be an appearing, to be a revelation, to be an apocalypsis. As he is, I love this, I am. Isn't that what Jesus said? I am. And I am. And you am. If you understand that this God is in you. As he is, I am. That, I mean, you know, from a religious perspective, that almost is uncomfortable to say. But from a spiritually true reality, I get goosebumps saying it. Because it's the excellency of the power is not of me, but of God that's in me. Hallelujah. As He is, I am. And that's what communion is about. It's to reconnect us to that reality, to that truth. Often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me of the God that's in you, of the God life that dwells within your mortal body to bring sozo, healing, health, deliverance, whatever you need, it's yours. Praise the Lord. Toby, if you would, uh, and and, uh, James, how about you uh, helping out and take the elements here and pass them among the, the people. If you got a piece of cracker that's big enough to put some uh, anchovy or salami on, you might want to crack it in half. Take it home, save it for a snack. This is like a the whole body. <laughs> it's okay. You're well. You know you're forgiven, so it's all good. Thank the Lord. Amen. So I want you to be 
thinking about those things. Maybe there's stuff going on right now in your life or things that you know are coming up. We need to discern the body and believe that this is a finished work. And that's all we're really doing is we're just identifying with that reality, with that truth. As often as we do it, we do it remembering Him, discerning His body broken for us, His blood shed for us, everything that He did to provide for us. Amen? The crown of thorns, the, the whole thing. And that is a finished work. And the finished work provides all that we have need of in this life, whether it be pertaining to natural things or to the spiritual things. Praise God. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. That is the great mystery that God wants revealed. And He wants to reveal it in each and every one of us. And we're participating in what some might call a ritual, what we call the remembrance. And when we do it with a true understanding of the finished work of the cross, something supernatural does take place. It's an awakening to that life that's in each and every one of us. That this body, he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the New Testament. The New Covenant. The Grace Covenant. In my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. He came not just to do away with our sin, although that was the thing between us and what He wanted us to be. He came that we might be a new species, a new creation, begotten of the Lord. He was the firstborn, and we are all brethren. Hallelujah. We have God life flowing through our veins. And as often as we have communion and do communion, we're simply reminding ourselves of our true identity, of who we are and what our potential is in Christ. Just like the world didn't know Him. They knew the man, but they didn't know the God in Him. That's why they don't know us, He said. They know us. They know Suzanne. They know Sally. They know Jody. They, they know... Tim, you know, Peter, they, they know this, but they don't know our true identity, our real reality of God in the flesh. And they try to rob us of the same thing. And it's only through symbolic acts like this to remind us, to continuously remind ourselves who we are, what our true identity is. And what power has been invested in us yes. to do what only God can do in the earth through human beings. He could save the entire earth. Amen. He made it possible. So nothing shall be impossible to you if you can believe. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. The Lord. Give him a hand this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My prayer is that this year... There'll be a greater revealing of Jesus in each of our lives, to us and through us. Yes. And that God will be revealed. He'll be seen in His temple. Yes. Hallelujah.
and many will come to salvation. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Have a safe trip home. Yes. If you're coming back tonight, enjoy the, the celebration. I think is it, it's not BYOB or did I misunderstand that? <laughs> Whatever. It's not BYOB. Just, <laughs> oh, BYOC. Bring your own chocolate. There you go. Praise the Lord. But come, enjoy the time uh, with one another. Have a good time and uh, uh, happy new year. We're all going to experience this new year together. And I believe God's got some tremendous things in store for all of us. If we'll just I'll wait to the new day. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Dismissed in Jesus' name.